Well, I've got my new wood bandsaw here. I've never owned a wood bandsaw before. I've never owned a metal bandsaw for that matter. Um, I've never actually used a wooden bandsaw ever. Um, I've used a lot of metal bandsaws, but that's uh, way different than this. I'm pretty excited for this, so we're gonna get it opened up and uh, start getting it assembled. So we've got the instructions right on top. I am gonna keep those handy. Set those over on the workbench. We've got the feet spacer and bolt kit. Comes with a T-handle Allen wrench, which is really nice. We've got the, uh, these would be the uh, table adjustment. Ratcheting wings. We have the table, which, uh, the one side, it looks like it's coated in some sort of anti-corrosive compound, which is really nice. We're going to set that up on the table. This is one of the things that comes last, and it weighs a lot. Big piece of cast iron. We have the fence. So this is the uh, higher rip fence, but you can also set it on the side. Um, we have the fence gauge. Fence clamp. Uh, we have an adjustment hand wheel, tracking knob. That is the tracking wheel knob. So we'll get all these set without banging anything over on the table. We have the sides, so two sides to the base. This rod, which I'm gonna point out now and when I assemble it, this is the rod that the fence slides on and there are holes here and here and here and here for assembly. One set of these holes is bigger than the other side. That'll make a lot of sense when I go to put this together. Uh, the bolts go inside of this thing so that the track is able to slide over the top of it. And we have a big piece of styrofoam. And we're down to the bandsaw itself. I got this from a local jet uh, refurbishment slash supply store over by Seattle, Washington. So I got an amazing deal on this. And if you live local to Seattle or Western Washington, I highly recommend uh, the jet refurb slash supply store. I need your help. I need your help right now. Well, you know how well I wait. I know, you can organize some of your bins. I already did that. You organized all of those bins that were on the table. Every bin's organized, ready for you, waiting on you. Waiting on me. Okay, well, you just hang out, and if I'm not there in a minute, you just keep waiting, all right? Yeah, <laughs> okay. Okay, bye. Bye. So I highly recommend you get two people to do this. Um. But you basically want to stand it up just like I have and they package it in such a way that, you sh that you're able to walk it out of the box. Just like so. You need to open the box with the picture so that it's upright. Open the top of the box first. They tape in these two side plates so that when you walk the, the saw out, they stay in place. They're taped in place. We're gonna go ahead and get the base put together. We have the front and back plates to the base. We also have the 
side plates. And here is the other. The holes in the plates are threaded, so there's no nuts required. So I'm gonna get all eight bolts in, there's four per plate in place before I snug them up. My table's really pretty close to flat, but you wanna make sure that the side plates don't stick up higher than the in plates um, because the saw won't sit on there flat if you don't validate that. So I made, I readjusted this one a little bit. Once we get those put on, we're gonna flip it over so it's upside down and we're gonna install the feet. I have ordered a wheel kit for this, but it won't be here for a, quite a while. So because I wanna get this off and running, I'm gonna go ahead and install this now. And I might regret that later, but for right now, I'm gonna put all four um, rubber bumpers on, on the feet. A Couple things I'm gonna do before I put the bands on. I wanna assemble some of the miscellaneous components, uh, the slide and this handle. I'm not gonna put this stuff on the table saw until I have it up on the stand because it weighs a lot and it's gonna be kind of challenging to get it up there, but. So this should be 14 millimeter and it is. So you wanna snug that up, make sure it still spins, which it does. So that is the hand wheel for the adjustment of the guard. So next we have the sliding gauge. So we loosen up the two wing nuts on the side of the, uh, this is cast iron and machined to where that it should be pretty close to perfect right out of the box. Uh, this is aluminum. I guess if you make a mistake and you hit it with a blade, it won't kill it. There is a Teflon or Delron screw in here that will slide on the table. We'll get to that in a little while though. Hello? You want to come up and give me a hand? Uh, who is this? Um, this is the guy that's going to go drive your camper home. Uh, I don't think so. That's my camper. I drive it home. You plan on driving it home? No. I didn't think but so. I so, speaking of... We're on, we're on YouTube, so can you come and help me with this? Yeah, I think we should cut some of the branches down that Uncle Chris wanted you to cut down. Of course you do. The ones I don't want to cut down? Yeah, those ones. Yeah. Okay, love you, bye. Love you, bye. My wife decided to go buy a camper. Uh, it's a conventional tow, but it's like 30 feet long. We bought it over in Tacoma or Fife, actually. Um, we're going to pick it up this Saturday. This is Monday, and she bought it last Saturday, and now we're going to pick it up this coming Saturday at 1 o'clock. I'm probably going to make a video about it. I've never been in a, I mean, I've been in campers. I've never stayed overnight in a camper. Not a big camping fan. She seems to really want to do it. So she went and bought one. So we're going to go pick it up. It'll be interesting. I think we're good. Okay. Well, that was easier than I thought it was going to be. Now that we've got it up there on the base, we've got these four hole, four bolt holes, and there's these long bolts that go in each one. It's on there. So there's a little tiny Allen set screw inside of here, which goes onto this flat spot on this hand wheel. See that right there? Little trap door guy. That's to give you that extra clearance you need in order to get those that full 12 inch of resaw capability. I don't actually have a blade to put in this because it does not come with a blade, but we are gonna go ahead and get the table installed tonight and then we'll move on to the blade a little later. A Couple things I wanna point out with the table. I think we're gonna need to clean off the one side with probably some WD-40. Um, we'll see, we're gonna get it put over here. It looks to me like it comes covered in cosmology. Definitely does, which is okay, that's good, right? It keeps it from rusting while it's in shipment and being stored. 
But now we gotta get all that cosmic off. So you want to take this plate out also, because underneath of that plate is cosmoline, or I suspect is cosmoline. Besides which, a little WD-40 keeps things from rusting, so keeping this thing oiled up. They make, they make specific products to keep coated on here. You can use different types of wax if you want to. Um, you want to make sure you're not using anything with silicone in it because uh, it impregnates wood potentially and can cause your finishes on your wood to bubble or not adhere properly. And this plate, and we're going to set this in here. And this is below flush, right? This is way too low. And, in, and there's four little set screws in here that we're going to use to adjust this plate so it's perfectly level with this um, table. So that screws in there, no wobble, we're flush, we're ready to roll. So we will bring this baby over here once we get the feet lined up. So underneath of here, we've lined up the, the turntable, or table we'll call it, and these little guys are push button and they, you can see, they come in and out. So this allows you to spin this wheel by hand to get it started. So you can basically get it up here, carefully spin it with your fingers by holding the bottom, which will get it most of the way in where it belongs, and then you're able to ratchet it down to snug it up, right? But you wanna get the other one on there first. All right, first thing we're gonna get mounted is this track, and it mounts with two small little screws, and there's they're, they're slotted holes, you can see here, so you can get the adjustment left and right to get the numbers lined up once you get a blade installed on here and you have your fence set up. So they go into two pre-tapped holes. I'm just gonna ever so lightly snug those up because until I get the blade and the guide on here, I won't be able to zero this. This bar, as I mentioned early on, has two holes, one here and here, and on the other side, it has two smaller holes. So the mounting bracket for this, which is these, these bolts go inside through the holes and into the metal so that they disappear. Then the bushing is installed here. I also want to point out that the distance from this hole to the end is slightly more than the distance from this hole to this end the long side goes towards the back. So in the back of this thing right here is a Delron nub and it works off an Allen wrench and you can stick an Allen wrench down through this hole and adjust the height of that to level this to the bed or the table. In this instance, it looks to me that it's already there. I think that's just random coincidence and once I get a blade, I will check it. But you would use that Delron uh, slide which allows us to slide nice and easily on the table to get your level up and down this direction if it was off But it seems like it's pretty dang good right now Through the amazing Amazon I uh, Was able to get a saw blade at the very next day I put this together quit for the night went in the house whatever saw blade boom got home from work and a saw blade had, had showed up in the mail. Uh, Timberwolf bandsaw blade. So this one is a 115 inch by quarter inch by six tooth per inch, positive claw. There we go. And remove the plate itself. The uh, lower uh, guides are actually lo completely loosened and pushed out of the way, which we need that to happen. We also need to loosen and push this set of guides out of the way and open them up. Open up the housing. Open the magnetic track. Open the lower housing. 
dropping the guard. Okay. There is a uh, baffle, plastic baffle inside of this model of saw. You need to remove that. That baffle goes back over to help the suction work better. All right. Uh, the tension is all the way released with the lever down. And go ahead and, oh, one more thing on this model bandsaw, there's a little set screw right here in the front that keeps the table, the cast iron table nice and together, perfectly level. You need to remove that. Go ahead and close the magnetic door. Now we're gonna leave this upper part open once we put our slide back where it belongs. We got a couple of things we have to do first. We need to set the blade tension and then we're gonna set the blade tracking. So this blade tension guide has yellow settings and a red setting and the yellow settings have marks. So there's eighth inch, quarter inch, three eighths, half and three quarter. So we're going for the quarter inch setting for this quarter inch blade. So we've loosened the tension all the way up and we're going to go and snug it up a little bit because we loosened it way up. And then we're gonna check the tension by cranking up on the lever. And you see that needle's not quite where it belongs. So we're gonna go a little bit more, check it again. Now we're too much. Now we're gonna go back. And we're right in the middle of the quarter inch mark on the blade tension lever. So we use the knob and the handle, we always, we loosened the handle, then we use the knob to get us where we belong. That also has a window built into the case to allow you to see that when you're under normal operation. Now that we have done that, we are gonna adjust the blade tracking. Now the blade tracking is adjusted with the side knob on the other side. When I twist the tracking knob, you see how it's pitching that wheel left and right? i give you a different angle to see if this is easier to see. So when I move that tracking knob, you see how it pitches the wheel left and right? That adjusts the tracking of the blade. Now I can see the tracking of the blade through the window. So what we're gonna do is with it tensioned, we're gonna, ch oh, see how it's moving? So we just ever so slightly tighten until the blade tracks right in the middle. It looks like it's tracking really well right now. So we have spun that wheel. We've got the blade tension set with the tension lever. The Set the tracking with the tracking knob, and now we're gonna snug up that tracking wheel here. Now we have to square up the table, set the table tilt adjustment, square up the fence, and we'll be there. In order to square up the table on the back of this is a little, which I'm really regretting moving that, that around. This swing gate right here opens, accesses a hole in the bottom. This bolt and nut thread into the bottom of the table. This is your adjustment to get the table 90 degrees to the blade. In order for us to do that, we're gonna spin this plate closed and we're gonna set this on top of here and then we're going to check for square between the table and the blade with a, with a framing square. 
that the table is crooked. It's tilting backwards. So we need to crank that bolt so that it will tilt forwards. And we're gonna do that. All right, we're getting close. So I'm gonna get my square and we're gonna check it against the table. So I don't know how well you can see that, but there's a gap down here and there's not up here, which means the table still needs to come back this direction. Now, I'm going to try and use my wrench to do that with. And watch this adjustment as I do it. Okay, so there's no gap all the way up my square now. I'm going to go ahead and lock that nut onto the bolt to lock it in place. Perfect, so the blade is 90 degrees to the table. A while back I mentioned that there was a zero marker right here. I know it's hard to see that, but now that we have the table zeroed, we're going to go ahead and break that loose. All right. We're there, finally. So now this pointer is set to zero. The table is square to the blade. All right, I wanna recap real quick because we're to the point where I need to plug the saw in uh, in order to check the fence. So real quick, we set the blade tension with the blade tension lever and the adjustment knob. We set the blade tracking with the tracking knob on the back we set the lower in, under the table and the upper blade guides with the ceramic inserts. We squared the table to the blade and we set the zero indicator to the table. In order to check the fence, the rip fence squareness to the blade, we actually have to turn the saw on and make a, a, a test cut on a piece of wood. So this is the on off switch and this is the front of the machine. So you might have just noticed that that illuminated, which is good. The safety switch is in place, and I should just be able to pull out on the knob and it should turn the saw on. One thing I want to point out, with these ceramic inserts, let me pull this out of here just to make everybody happy. There you go, see that? Can't, can't, well, can't operate without that in well. With these ceramic inserts, you may see some very light sparking uh, from the first couple times you install the blade. That's normal. However, never having done this before and not having someone here to give me the same guidance, it sounds to me like the blade is rubbing too much on the ceramic inserts, and I don't want to wear these inserts out even though they are replaceable. So what I'm going to do is actually reset the upper ceramic inserts real quick and then turn the saw back on and see if that helps with some of the noise. So I have reset the ceramic inserts and there was a slight rub mark on the bottom ceramic insert. So we're going to reinstall the key. Okay, I want to point out that that significantly helped with the noise. However, it sounds to me like the bottom insert is also screwed up. So, we're going to pull out the stop. Reinstall the kill switch. All right, it's not loud, but it's definitely not rubbing anymore. 
or any more than I would expect it to. So I'm really happy with that. I'm gonna grab a piece of wood and we'll go ahead and get ready to set the track it for the fence. In order to check the fence being square to the blade, so we square the table, we need to check the fence is now parallel to the blade. This blade is exceptionally thin, which makes this very challenging. And I've never done this before. I've only watched a video on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut into here an inch or so, and we're going to see if the blade is touching the back on one side or the other. So we'll go ahead and start and see what we think. Okay. It appears to me that at least with this small thin blade, and I might have to check this later when I get my thicker blade, that the fence is pretty square to the blade itself. If we needed to adjust that on the fence back here, which I'll bring this over a little bit so you guys can see it. These three holes allow us to loosen up the upper casting and it allows us to swivel the fence in relation to the blade. And we would recheck it the way we just did. I need to get the three quarter inch blade, not the quarter inch blade and, and that allows you to see the gap and see if it's um, really truly off. Uh, you notice that I set the fence on its side in order to do this. I'm gonna go ahead and stand it back up because I wanna try it for resaw purposes because I've never played with it before. And we're gonna go ahead and resaw this piece of fascia. This is a piece of scrap I have. I wanna run it through this way. So we're gonna loosen up and raise up so that we're just above, so we clear, so that's about right where we wanna be. We're gonna re-snug up the gauge, the guide. Bring the fence over. So this is how, the other thing is we need to also validate that our zero is, is in line with our blade. Uh, we can do that a couple different ways. We can use a square off of the table. And it is pretty dang good off my eyeball. So I'm just gonna leave it where it's at for right now. Then we're gonna bring this back over here, kind of line it up, snug it down. And I realize that this is not a resaw blade, but I'm gonna try it out anyway and hopefully everything goes well. So that went incredibly well. I mean, this is super smooth. And that gives me a very thin, very unfortunately flexible piece of, you could use this as a veneer if you wanted to, I guess. Not that you ever would this type of wood, but. Well, that's a challenging one because I have lots of inside and, and, and things, but we're gonna give it a whirl and see what we think. Well, pretty, uh, pretty happy with that. What do I think? I think this is an amazing tool to have added to my arsenal for uh, woodworking. Definitely glad I went and bought this. Got it, uh, an amazing deal. Definitely check out the link in the description. Uh, it might just be a link to Google address. I don't know if they have a web page or not. I got this at a surplus store uh, from Jet a jet surplus store. This is a Laguna saw though. This was an upgrade from the saw I was looking at buying. Very, very happy with this saw. Uh, as you saw, I was able to actually get it all set up and put it to good use. I'm gonna go give that to my kid and she should be pretty thrilled, I would imagine. Uh, really, really easy to put together. Really straightforward. I did watch a few videos before I came and put mine together. I didn't even open my instruction manual because the videos from Laguna 
from the manufacturer. If you type in Bandsaw Assembly Laguna on YouTube, you will find a series of 14 videos on how to assemble this specific saw. Definitely go watch those. It will make this assembly for you incredibly straightforward. I did cover a majority of the major um, things that I found to be useful when I watched that entire series. The only thing that I haven't done on this saw is, is, is 90 degree this or parallel the rip pins to the blade. I need to get my three quarter inch blade, which will be here tomorrow, uh, which is a rip blade, right? I couldn't do this type of thing with a three quarter inch thick blade. Uh, so I suspect I will get the intermediate. This is a quarter. I have a three quarter coming. I'll probably end up with a half inch. Um, overall, incredibly happy with this. Super excited I got it. Setup was easy. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, getting to watch someone that's never touched a bandsaw in their life or a wood bandsaw in their life, uh, put it to good use. And I'm really looking forward to getting to make some stuff with this. Resaw purposes, I have actually some, some logs that I've, I've got in my yard that I plan on um, messing around with, I'll say. I'm gonna get them dried out a little bit and probably run them through here for resaw, get them trued up a little bit and, and make something out of them. Really excited they got this. I tell you what, I can't say that enough. I've said it a thousand times. Really, really, really happy with this. That about wraps up this video, I, I gotta be honest. Uh, I am going to release the tension, which is the lever on the back. One thing I like about this tension lever is the lever comes down kind of in your way, so if you're on the front of this, you'll see the tensioning lever being loosened up before you go to use it. You really wouldn't wanna turn this thing on um, with that tension lever down, it would be very catastrophic. Could be catastrophic. But yeah, uh, I have the wheel kit coming from the same person, same company I bought this from, which will allow me to store it back in the corner over there when I don't need it. Lots more projects to come on this, I can tell you that for sure. Lots more projects, lots more practice. Pretty excited about that. Hope you guys enjoyed, hope you got something out of this. Uh, maybe check out these other links. I'll, I'll have my garage build. I'll have the miscellaneous garage video, which we we'll probably post before this one. And definitely hit that subscribe button, it always helps me out. Appreciate you guys watching.